We often get asked, where does PACT fit into our testing strategy? And if it doesn't fully replace end-to-end -end integrated tests, how do we do that? Well, let's answer those questions now. Let's start with the test pyramid. Uh, it, probably a quick primer will be helpful. So it's a heuristic that helps us understand how we should allocate our time and effort on various types of testing. Uh, first proposed by a guy named Mike Cohn. As you move up the pyramid, you get more confidence, but at the cost of slow and expensive, uh, slow and expensive feedback. And like the food pyramid, you want to invest more time at the bottom and less time at the top. At the bottom of the pyramid, things run much faster, the cost of feedback is lower, and you get less confidence. This is a trade-off of the pyramid. What the pyramid says is you should spend more time at the bottom, unit test, integration, than you should be at the top. What we see though, is above the level of integration tests, we often see an overinvestment in companies spending more time there. And this is a very expensive exercise. What we wanna try and do is drive that line of expensive test up. Often the reason for this overinvestment in end-to-end -end tests is simply because one, entropy. Over time, teams just seem to add more and more to that suite. You find reasons for for adding them, it's kind of convenient in a way, even though it's quite painful to do. The second reason is oftentimes we see consumers writing end-to-end -end test on behalf of providers. And so therefore you have lots of different consumers writing end-to-end -end scenarios that are duplicating tests over providers. And so over time, you get this kind of entropy where lots of different tests are duplicated and that's a problem. So the first thing we want to look at doing is rebalancing our test pyramid. There's two things we can do quickly. The first one is we can add contract tests like we talked about just before. And we can add it around the integration phase. So it's contract tests sit above a unit test, somewhere around the integration test, but below an end-to-end -end test. Contract tests will replace the types of tests in end-to-end -end that you've got. The, the job is to make sure that they can communicate to each other. The various applications in that distributed systems are able to send messages and receive them and communicate effectively. There is a level of functional testing that goes on with contract tests, but that's more of a nice side effect than its intended purpose. The second thing we can do is we can increase the functional integration test coverage for business logic. Again, because we often see end-to-end -end tests used by consumers to check the behavior of providers, that's an easy win. We can simply move the consumer test functional test into the provider test pipeline. And we'll often find we get a speed up there simply because there's so much overlap and duplication between other consumers and other parts of the ecosystem. Usually doing those two things alone is enough to significantly reduce what goes into your end-to-end -end tests and therefore reduce the maintenance cost of them. So you can see here there's a delta as we invest more in our integration functional tests and contract tests, we've removed a lot of those expensive tests and got a lot of savings. The next thing we can do, which is a bit brief side note, is we can just shrink the whole pyramid. Oftentimes, again, over time, lots of entropy is built up, lots of tests that maybe aren't as useful, aren't as relevant or aren't serving your purpose, they're still there. So sometimes it's good just to apply a lens of what is actually necessary, what is actually serving us, review all of your tests and just cut them all back. So if you can just shrink the whole pyramid, you're gonna get savings everywhere. So the next thing to think about is, well, now we've got our functional tests, our integration tests working nicely. We've got contract tests in there that are giving us really fast uh, local feedback about communication challenges. We still have some end-to-end -end tests left. And there's a few approaches to remove them. The first thing probably is worth looking at, well, how much value are those end-to-end -end tests actually giving us? Is it more of a smoke test now? Is it just a little thing we do just prior to release? And maybe you can start to reduce the number of them just to give you some confidence around those scenarios. What I've done in previous projects is start to think about, well, what if we move those end-to-end -end tests that run only during builds and move them into production and replace them with things like canary and smoke test during a release and automating rollbacks when things are wrong, semantic monitoring and synthetic transactions. If we actually invest more there to do continuous testing of business scenarios, uh, critical business scenarios, we get a few real big, benef real big benefits. The first one is 
um, those end-to-end -end tests are not going to be flaky anymore. We know they're flaky. They tend to be these builds that are red right up until a release happens. If you move them into production and uh, place a pager against them, well, your team is going to get mon notified if that test fails. And very quickly, you're going to get sick of being woken up at three o'clock in the morning and you're going to make sure those tests become very reliable. So now all of a sudden, you not only have end-to-end -end tests, but you have very useful ones that are serving you. Uh, and of course, there's a bunch of other things you can do in production, like increasing your tele telemetry and observability, increase your logging and do aggregated logging so, and give it to the whole team so they can see what's going on and get some really good monitoring and alerting going on. And now you're not so worried about having end-to-end -end tests as a, as a cover. Um, now what we're doing is optimizing for mean time to recovery. When there is a problem, we know what the problem is very quickly. We can identify the problem, resolve the problem very quickly. End-to-end -end tests are kind of this crutch that we lean on to say, well, I really don't want to push a bug into production and it's, it's a bit of a catch-all to try and prevent that. But ultimately, they don't serve us very well. And the other forms of testing, all put together in this nice, healthy, balanced uh, diet of testing, if you will, is actually going to serve us better.